Hi, my name is Brian Kaffa, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian, part of our weekly newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter in the video description below. Also, if you get a chance, ask a question. So this week I got a question that says, what does it mean for a procedure to be robust to normality? Uh, uh, and they were specifically talking about uh, the concept of regression. But, you know, we can talk about this idea in general. So what they were talking about is if you fit a regression model, say y equals beta naught, let's just say linear regression, beta one, xi plus epsilon i, often we'll assume that the epsilon i's are iid, they're independent and identically distributed, and they have a normal mean with variance sigma squared. And under those assumptions, we can get exact, say, confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for our estimator for the slope parameter. We can get um, a 95% confidence interval, say, that actually adheres, given the model is correct, to the confidence to it adheres to covering the true value of beta 1 95% of the time in repeated samples. Okay. Now, what people mean when they say it's robust to the normality assumption is this specific assumption in this model, the, nor the normal part of the errors. And what they are suggesting in this case is you could have and your epsilon i's be, for example, iid, where you know their mean is zero, and you know their variance is uh, variance of my epsilon i's is sigma squared, and your beta one hat under some pretty benign assumptions on on your x's, under uh, these set of assumptions will still converge as you get collect enough data to beta one, and your confidence intervals created in the same way that you normally conduct them will actually still continue to have 95% uh, coverage and your hypothesis test will still have the correct error rate. Um, now, of course, that is assuming you have the, the, the mean model for your response is correct and that you've selected the right regression model. It also makes this very important assumption about the IID errors. You also have this assumption about a constant variance. So there's a lot of assumptions that go into regression model. At any rate, it turns out that you can actually get perfectly valid um, confidence intervals and uh, consistency of our regression estimate without appealing to the explicit normality of the errors. Now, of course, that relies on asymptotics. There are other variations, robust versions of regression that try to further chip away for finite samples the reliance on normality. And as I mentioned a couple of times, I want to make sure that you remember, oh, let me get that back, that we're making a lot of assumptions, you know, the constant variance, the IID assumptions, the correct model, the whatever process led us to this model, all of these things play into whether or not our error rates have the correct coverage. At any rate, it turns out if you're willing to fix all those things and assume they're true or assume, you know, not not be concerned about any of those other factors that the normality isn't isn't quite as the the principal concern uh there's you know i think this comes up very often in intro introductory statistics courses when they talk about for example the confidence interval for the mean we say y is plus or minus a t uh, quantile say the one minus alpha over two uh, t quantile with uh, n minus one degrees of freedom and s over square root n, that that confidence interval doesn't depend uh, heavily on the normality of the underlying observations. You can generate data from lots of observations, lots of underlying distributions, and the interval will actually cover the true value of the mean fairly well. And that's the reason for that is because the t distribution has very wide, has very wide tails. Um, so, there's another collection of techniques, for example, so-called what I would call kind of classical non-parametrics, where people are very concerned about, let me write it out there, where people were very concerned about um, the issues like assumptions of normality in finite samples in models. And so, for example, if you're, uh, instead of running a two-group t-test, you might do something like the so-called Kruskal, the Kruskal-Wallis test. So um, that that test is highly, is, is completely robust to normality because you replace the data um, in a sense by the ranks, 
and the ranks under the IID assumptions and under the, a certain kind of null hypothesis, you actually know the exact distribution of, of the Kruskal wall statistic. And then you have, a, 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 let's say, a hypothesis test with the correct error rate without having to make any sort of appeal to normality that applies very broadly. Of course, uh, when you do this, you pay for something with it and you pay for some interpretability right? These models that we have up here, like this linear regression model, has this great interpretability. So um, part of the benefit of the modeling and, 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 and things like that is, is that interpretability. So if you go all the way to these classic non-parametric techniques, you pay with a little bit, nor belt, nor, uh, little bit of interpretability. Okay, so at any rate, the long and short of it is, is when people say a statistic or a procedure is robust to normality, what they typically mean is that one of these processes is is happening either that if you can have uh, asymptotically correct inferences uh, whether you assume normality or not for a broad class of underlying uh, generating distributions or um, that even in finite samples like in this case that in the case of the one sample t statistic that it works quite well and is uh, robust to lots of underlying distributions, even though the way in which we derived it required underlying normality. Its performance isn't uh, really highly dependent on that underlying normality. Okay, so that's kind of the two senses in which people use that phrase. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think one thing that, that typically, I think everyone gets taught this fact about the T interval in an introductory statistics class. I think it's kind of uncommon for uh, when people talk about regression to, to talk too much about the fact that the procedures that people use um, asymptotically hold quite well for regression and so that you don't actually need the normality assumption uh, in regression. I think that's kind of a less well, um, you know, l less uh, commonly taught fact. Um, okay, well, I think if you have anything else to add, maybe put it in some of the YouTube comments, uh, you know, keep submitting those questions. One of these days, I'll have one of these sessions where I try and answer a bunch of them at once to try and catch up a little bit more. I know that I'm getting a backlog. So if your question isn't getting answered, um, I'll try and, uh, you know, uh, do a couple at a time in the upcoming weeks. Okay, thanks. And I'll see you again next week.